Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. I don't think I've ever had this much game dev news packed into a single tweet ever in the history of this channel. Today, we're talking about Unreal Engine, specifically Unreal Engine 6, because we're getting the first details of what exactly that is going to mean. Now, the tweet in question is not the one you see on screen. This is what led to it, and this is from Warforge, a creator for UEFN. UEFN is Unreal Engine for Fortnite. Uh, they're basically, it's a stripped down version of Unreal Engine, specifically designed for creating Fortnite experiences you can create and monetize your experiences, and it's a big part of uh, Epic Games' focus going forward. And one of the creators said, if Verse, by the way, Verse is the programming language created for UEFN, uh, it is a scripting language, an alternative to C++ or Blueprint. So if Verse was in Unreal, I would have a team of developers tomorrow building mobile and indie games. Blueprints are hard to scale, manage, and C++ is too complicated. And then follow-up response is, so would you advise people to learn Verse over learning C++? By the way, the answer for that is no. Uh, but uh, Tim said it will come to Unreal one day. And that, that was actually never formally clarified. It has been suggested. I think at GDC they said that it, it should be coming, but I don't think it was ever actually verified that it was actually coming to Unreal Engine. But... Uh, Tim said it would come to Unreal Engine one day. It's an amazing language they currently use for Fortnite maps. I can get new devs up and running in Verse in a month. Uh, a year of C++ is still only 10% of what you need to know to use C++. So that was the original comment. Now, the one that the tweet that has so much information packed into it came from Tim himself, and it is not in 2024, but it's coming. A UE6 equals UE5 plus Verse plus rough deployment parity into Fortnite and into standalone products plus metaverse economy plus standards, plus question mark, question mark, magic, TBD. So we actually got a lot of information packed into that single tweet. Now, first off, what it tells us is that Unreal Engine 6 is not coming in 2024. Uh, I don't think that's a huge shock. There was, I think, about six or seven years uh, between UE4 and UE5. So we've only been about two years of UE5 now. So it would be way ahead of schedule. And I don't think it's going to be another four or five years until we see Unreal Engine 5 or Unreal Engine 6, that is. But it's definitely going to be uh, in the future at some point. So if you're waiting for Verse, this is also, I think, a little bit of bad news. Now, I'm reading the link between the lines here, but what this tells me is that Verse is an Unreal Engine 6 feature. That means it's going to be a little bit of time before we see Verse in Unreal Engine. So if you've been holding your breath for Verse, well, it's actually starting to look like Verse is actually a marquee feature. Now, if you think about it, Unreal Engine 4, one of the pillar features of it over Unreal Engine 3, other than a complete editor redesign and all that stuff, was Blueprints, the replacement for Kismet, the new scripting language. Well, it looks like Unreal Engine 6, Verse is going to be that. Now, I can't imagine that Blueprints are going to go away. I think it's going to be a complementary thing, but I think I think what you're going to find is with Unreal Engine 6, the way that this is being described, uh, Verse is a core pillar. So it's going to probably be built in basically uh, from the ground up. At least that's my interpretation here. Now, there's a couple other things you can pack in here. Obviously, again, not in 2024. Big piece of news there. Uh, rough deployment parity into Fortnite, into, into standalone products. I don't really understand what this comment means per se, uh, because they've always used Unreal Engine for dog fooding Fortnite anyway. So they've been kind of at feature parity all along. So I'm not really sure what that would mean uh, and into standalone products. Again, I, I'm not sure what he means by that comment. Metaverse economy, that one I 100% understand. I'm going to explain that one uh, kind of going on going forward. Plus standards, plus magic. That's your catch all. Other new features are coming into it, and that's what we're going to see. Standards is probably things like uh, the new uh, texturing formats that are open source, the um, open source things like USD, uh, maybe GLTF, etc. So uh, that seems to be the core tenants of Unreal Engine 6 uh, from this tweet. So like I said, there is a lot of information packed into that particular tweet. Now, if you're wondering about a couple of the things here, first off, Unreal Engine for Fortnite. Now, this, again, it's basically a subset of Unreal Engine tools made specifically for creating Fortnite experiences. You can monetize them. People are making money for this. It's basically like uh, Unreal Engine's own version of Roblox to, to really minimize it down to the simplest level. Uh, but they've got an entire creator economy they're creating out of this and you use Unreal Engine tools to do it. So uh, basically, if you're comfortable with Unreal Engine, this has a lot of the same features and functionality. But the key thing here is, again, the programming language for UEFN is Verse. Now, Verse is the new programming language created at Epic Games specifically specifically for UEFN, and then eventually, as we just found out from this tweet the other day, uh, going to be coming to Unreal Engine 6. 
uh, as to uh, what the language is about, it's beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about here, but the design goals were it is a strongly typed language, uh, multi-paradigm, uh, so functional program, object-oriented, imperative programming, uh, being as deterministic as possible. Um, there is no distinction between statements and expressions. Everything is an expression. Failure is control flow instead of using true-false to change the flow of your program. Verse uses failable expressions. The ability to do speculative execution and concurrency are key features of the language. If you want to learn more about it, this is the verse language uh, documentation, the best place to go and find out how things actually work. So you can drill down into these things and actually see uh, examples of, you know, synchronization, the way verse looks and so on. Here you can see a, an example of uh, verse code. Here is another example of verse. This is the syntax of verse. Uh, so this kind of gives you an idea of what a typical verse program looks like. To me, it's got heavy Pascal vibes, uh, but it was based off of uh, other languages out there for sure. So Pascal is not the dominant one. It's, it's based off of a couple of relatively non-mainstream languages, to be honest. Uh, I haven't really used verse much. I'm not that interested in UEFN. I want to do content on it and it just, I don't know. I think it's a little too off topic for the channel, sort of like Roblox. I don't really cover Roblox much on this channel because they have their own ecosystem. Uh, so I haven't gotten into verse much. I don't really have an opinion on it. Uh, so here you can see an example of a snippet uh, for handling um, test event devices. Um, and then the other part of it, this is the creator economy. Now, this is something that Epic Games has been working on for a very long time. This is really core to what they're doing. Now, one of the major announcements was the other year at GDC, they announced FAB. Uh, now, I haven't been actually many announcements about FAB since that announcement at GDC. Uh, maybe we'll see something again this year, but this is the one app store to rule them all. Now, FAB is the app store that is used for UEFN, but this is ultimately going to be the asset store used for uh, Unreal Engine in the future, but also like for Unity, Godot, any game engine out there. They're trying to be like this universal app store where you go to get uh, models, materials, music, etc. Uh, and in order to make FAB work, they've actually been buying up a lot of companies, and I do mean a lot of companies. So uh, early on, back in 2019, probably one of their first major acquisitions, they bought Quixel. Now, Quixel's biggest product is the Mega Scans project. But on top of that, they've also got Bridge and Mixer. And I don't know if Mixer is still being updated, to be honest. Uh, but this update, uh, when they bought Quixel, that got them a huge huge library of uh, real world scans, 3D models, textures, that kind of stuff. And I think that's probably gonna be a core of a lot of the content you will see in FAB. On top of that, they also acquired uh, Capturing Reality back in 2021. I know Capturing Reality is um, a photogrammetry software for scanning and acquiring um, images from the real world. Again, fits nicely into their whole creator ecosystem idea here. And that is by no means their only purchase because they also purchased ArtStation. Now, ArtStation is a little bit of a weirder fit here. Uh, this is an online marketplace for 2D and 3D creators, a lot of tutorials, etc. cetera there. Um, but yeah, you can see how that would slot into this ecosystem as well. And then probably the biggest thing and where the name uh, Fab came from, I bet, was their acquisition of Sketchfab back in July of 2021. So uh, on top of that, they also bought Rad Tools and a few other companies as well. Plus they bought, um, oh, I don't remember the name of it right now, but they bought, like, was it SoundCloud? They bought a um, an audio service that they eventually spun off when they ran into some financial troubles as well. So you can see like this whole acquisition spree that they've gone through where they've just basically been buying up all of these um, community repositories for assets and it looks like they're going to be unifying them all together so it looks like that's going to be the other core tenant of unreal engine 6 so once again recap uh unreal engine 6 equals unreal engine 5 plus verse plus deployment parity into Fortnite and standalone products, plus the metaverse economy, which I think ultimately boils down to being fab, sketch, fab, capture and reality, art station, and all those other solutions, plus whatever else they're building in. And of course, fab is going to subsume or include all of the contents from the Unreal Engine marketplace as well. And I think that's gonna be just very, that whole bit will just be a core tenet of Unreal Engine 6 and then other stuff as well. So it's an interesting tweet. Again, a lot of information packed into a short tweet. And if you're wondering wondering what some of this particular stuff meant. Well, that's what we've covered. Also, let me know, have you tried Verse? Are you excited about it? This is one of those things I actually think Unreal Engine could have used a scripting language all along. They used to back in Unreal Engine 3 have Unreal Script, which is like a JavaScript type solution. Um, but then since they added Blueprints, there hasn't really been a built-in scripting solution out there. So I know a lot of people are like really, well, a lot of people want C Sharp, but a lot of people have been really waiting on Verse. And I'm curious to hear what you think. Because you're gonna know, at least my read from this is, 
Verse isn't going to come in Unreal Engine 5. That, that's kind of what this tweet tells me. And let me know, do you read it the same way? And are you disappointed by that? Or would you rather see Verse built in like a first-class language like Blueprints and be a core tenant of Unreal Engine 6? Again, a lot to pack away in this tweet. Uh, I may be reading too much into it, but I don't think so. So let me know what you think overall, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.